Hi guys, welcome back. Today we are going to be doing a really cool side-by-side -side comparison of two new skin tints. One is quite new, like very, very new, while the other is not. I thought they were really good to compare and contrast because A, the bottles look very similar. You already know what they are. So we have the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint SPF 40 and the Morphe 2 Hint Hint Skin Tint. So obviously the bottles look very similar, which was part of the reason I wanted to compare these. But also I think that they give pretty similar coverage and um, it's just a really good kind of like cheaper version versus more expensive version, clean versus not clean whatever that means to you. And I also thought I could do it with the Glossier, so if you do want to see that, let me know and I can do either of them comparing and contrasting. But let's just jump in because we have a lot to cover and get started. So I have these in quite different shades. I'm learning. Buying it online when you can't go into the store right now is really difficult, especially when your body is a different shade from your face because you wear so much sunscreen. So it is going to look crazy on my face, but we're going to go with it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the Ilia on my left side and the Morphe 2 on my right side. So let's do that. I have to get my hair out of my face. That's just how I am. I'm going to go ahead and put them on first because if you're just looking to see how they apply, I don't want to make you wait. So we'll do that and then I'll talk about ingredients, pros and cons, and kind of final thoughts. So I'm doing them both with my hands and I'm just going to start with a little at first. Um, you can always build up but I, of course it's a little harder to take it away. But they are both a skin tint, so you shouldn't be getting super crazy coverage, um, but you never know. <gasps> I'm gonna look so crazy, because this one is way too light. This would be like my winter shade, and the uh, Morphe 2 is gonna be maybe not too dark, but probably not the right undertone. I had a hard time, I mean, who doesn't have a hard time? Like. Kind of matching online and then they were starting to sell out of some of the shades that probably would have fit me better so that's where we are i look so washed out with this color and these lights um but you can see the difference between nothing on this side just sunscreen and then this side which is glowy and beaming to the moon Okay, next up. And both of these have droppers. Both of these go on pretty similarly. You just kind of plop it on your hand and they both have a very runny consistency. But they are not the same at all. And I think you can probably tell immediately what I mean. Um, the Morphe 2 dries down to a very dry finish, whereas the Ilia is glowy. <laughs> like they're polar opposites. And I got polar opposite shades, so this should be fun. Luckily, it's quarantine, so I don't really leave my house right now. <laughs> oh. Actually, this shade, while it is dark compared to my face, um, I think it actually works pretty well for my body. And since it is a skin tint, it's not like a foundation where if it's not exactly right, you're gonna notice. It's just a lighter coverage and you can kind of pull off a variety of different shades. So let's take a look. Now, one thing I do notice just right off the bat is because this side dries down so quickly and it has more of a matte finish, it tends to feel like you get a little bit more coverage. I put about the same amount on, but this side I can just see kind of the discolorations and redness and imperfections, whereas this side looks pretty damn good for light coverage. Like, I like it. <laughs> How crazy do I look though? Tell me the truth. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> no, don't really. Okay, so I am going to finish the rest of my makeup so it doesn't look so crazy, and then I'll come back to talk through ingredients and kind of the pros and cons of both of them. Okay, we're back. <laughs> I did a little bit more than I was expecting. Um, I just kind of had fun. I actually just used this Revlon. I love this stuff, Cushion Lip Tint. I used it on my lips and kind of a shadow. And then I used a little bit more of the eyeshadow from the Raw Beauty Christie X Morphe. I used, let's see, some of Camelot and some of It Just Does. I think that was it. And then this pure, what's it called? Eyeliner on point. Eyeliner down to earth in brown. 
um, the Thrive Mascara in brown, Glossier Skin, no, Glossier Stretch Concealer in G8. Also, last thing, this e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil in deep brown. So that's what's on my face, and I think you can kind of get a glimpse of what it looks like in comparison. This side is just on fire, like shining to the heavens. This side, it still has a glow to it, like right there. I mean, it is like 90 some degrees in North Carolina, so it's hot. But it's still, I feel like it's not so matte that I feel like I'm getting dried out. But then again, I've only had it on my face for five minutes or 10 minutes. This side though is on fire and I did not put any powder because I just kind of wanted to see it as a skin tint. Typically when you wear a skin tint, you don't go full beat. You don't do the whole like powder your face. So that's what it is. Okay, so just a little bit of basic information on this. This is the Hint Hint Skin Tint. It comes in 20 shades. It retails for $17. And within the 20 shades, they have five different levels. I talk a lot with my hands. Am I Italian? No. Okay, <laughs> they are, I know why. I'm a teacher. I teach online, that's why. So they have five levels and within each level there are four shades. That said, I think they did a great job of diversity of shade ranges, especially for a skin tint. Skin tints, traditionally you can get a bit more range. Like I could be from a four to an eight. I, I'm just making up those numbers. But with a skin tint, since it's not a full coverage, foundation, you can kind of pull off a few more shades, but I think that they did a great job. It comes in one fluid ounce, and sadly it is sold out in a lot of the shades, but it's Morphe. I think they pump these things out pretty quickly, so if you're just patient, I'm sure they will restock soon. Okay, ingredient breakdown. I'm going to start with the Morphe side. Now, when I do the ingredient breakdown, I typically just go over the top five ingredients, primarily because when you're reading an ingredient list, it is broken down by the most prevalent to the least prevalent. So, I, I mean, I could break it down the top 10, but just for time's sake, I only go through the top five. So for this product, the number one ingredient is water, pretty typical. The next ingredient after that is isodudecane. That is an oil-free emollient. It's a really good one if you follow EWG, which you can kind of place some value in, but not too much because there's some issues there. But they give it a one, which is the best, one out of eight, one being the best, eight being the worst. So isododecane is a good ingredient. It's number two. Number three would be glycerin. We all know what glycerin is. It's a great ingredient, very cheap, very common. You'll see it in pretty much every skincare and makeup. Well, not all of them, but it, there's nothing wrong with it. I've never come across anybody who really has any sensitivities to it. I will definitely give it a thumbs up. Number four is phenyl trimethicone. It is a silicone. It's also an emollient ingredient. One of the features of it is that it dries down faster than dimethicone. So I can tell immediately that that is the case. It dried down very quickly and um, you just don't have that kind of oily glow like you do over here. Okay, number five is trilux. Oh, let me say this properly. Trisiloxane. There we go. I said it so many times before that. <laughs> this is another fluid silicone and it has a very quick dry down. Now, if I went further, pretty much, I'm not gonna say all of them, but a huge amount of the ingredients in this are versions of silicones. And that does not surprise me at all considering how quickly it dried down and just the overall kind of dry touch finish to it. So if you don't like silicones, this is probably not the product for you. I have nothing against silicones. They are synthetic silicones, but this one you, you go into it knowing it's it's not marketed as clean beauty. It um, They don't try to like fool you into thinking that it is. So just know that it is full of silicones and um, for the most part, that's not a terrible thing, but if you don't like them, it's something to be aware of. That said, it could dehydrate your skin. If you have dry skin, if you tend to get clogged pores, this may be something that you wanna like mm, use with caution, maybe not every day or just not ever. But for me, I have normal to combination skin and especially in the summer where it is hot and humid, this is actually a really great option for me. But this side, I look like I put my head in an oil spill. And that's one thing I will get to very shortly. <laughs> okay, so going on, we will go over the pros and then the cons of this. So the pros, like I said before, it has a very dry, very quick kind of um, lightweight touch to it. And that's not to say that this is transfer proof. I can still feel it on my face. It does feel very nice though. I don't feel like if I rub my face, I'm gonna just rub it off. 
This side, I feel like I can rub it off. It also has a light natural coverage, but you do get a bit more coverage. Now, that said, I have a darker shade than the other side, so if I were to get two shades that are similar, we might notice the same amount of coverage. But I do find, maybe just because of the matte formula, that you do get a teensy bit more coverage. Again, this is a light coverage, it is a skin tint, you're not going to really go for like a full coverage or medium coverage. And I didn't try building it up just because I, I don't ever do that with skin tints. And the last pro about this is that it is affordable. This is $17, which is probably mid-range, I would say. Affordable would be under $10, but this is in the mid-range, but it is more than half the price of the Ilia. So that's great. It also comes in 20 shades, which is another plus. And looking at their shade range, they really do have a good diverse shade range. Sometimes they have 20 shades, but they have two dark shades and like 18, like very pale shades. And you're like, um, just cause you have 20 doesn't make it diverse. But this one, what they do is they break it up into five levels and then in each level they have four shades. So I thought it was a pretty good job and I was pretty impressed with that. Now, like I said, the cons. If you have dry skin, this may not be the one that you really wanna to go to. Just because typically, if you have very dry skin, mattes don't always agree, maybe with dry patches or your skin in general. And dimethicones used every day, and a lot of them can dry out your skin a bit more and make it a little bit more dehydrated. Another kind of downside to it is the ingredient list. While it's not terrible, it's definitely synthetic. And if you want a clean beauty product, this is not the one for you. This is just a standard makeup product and I would not claim any clean affiliation to it at all. That said, it's not terrible. Like just because it doesn't meet the clean requirements doesn't mean it's a terrible, terrible thing. They've done a lot of testing with synthetic products. Um, you're wearing it as makeup, it's not skincare. So, you know, there is a difference there. The last thing I wanted to mention as a downside to it is it sold out in so many of the shades. So I'm sorry if you love this or you think that you want it, um, but wait a little bit, I'm sure they'll come back and restock with more shades. Or not more shades, but more of it. Now on to the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint. Did I say that correct? Oh, I did. <laughs> nice. This retails for $46. It comes in one fluid ounce and in 18 shades. The shade range is a bit tricky in my opinion because I don't know if it actually holds true to the color that it comes out of the bottle in. So like that, I felt like it darkened a little bit on my face. That said, maybe other people haven't experienced that, but I had a really tricky time and it's very hard without being able to go into a Sephora and actually test it. Definitely email them. They have really good customer service and they can help you try to find the shade range if you're looking for it. It also is 40 SPF with 12% zinc oxide as the active SPF ingredient. Big thumbs up from that. Also, still wear sunscreen underneath. That's just, I mean, just do it. Let's break down the ingredients in this. So the very first ingredient is water. Just like this one. Water, water. That's very common. The second ingredient in this is squalane. Squalane is a really great lightweight oil that absorbs quickly into your skin and is really, really good for it. Typically, it's made out of olives. Um, it doesn't say in this, but Ilya does a really good job with sourcing their ingredients. So I'm I'm going to venture a guess that it is olive based. The next ingredient, number three, is shea butter ethyl esters. Now, shea butter ethyl esters are a really interesting ingredient because we all know what shea butter is. It's really rich, really nourishing, hydrating butter, but it can be really heavy on the skin. I wouldn't want to put it on my face during the day. It's better as kind of like a hand cream during very dry weather or at night, but with the ethyl esters, it basically takes the beautiful parts of the shea butter and makes it a lighter version so it's a bit more user-friendly and compatible with everyday facial wear. Number four is isoamyl laurate. This is commonly, well commonly in the like formulating world, known as dermophile, which is a natural silicone like oil and it's a really great ingredient. I use it in a lot of my skincare products and just 100% endorse this one for president. Isoamyl laurate 2020. If you're interested in the makeup of it, it is the esters of isoamyl alcohol and lauric acid. So combined, it makes isoamyl laurate. And number five is polyglycerol 3, which is a water and oil emulsifier. So when you make products that have both water and oil, you have to somehow combine them, which is called emulsification. 
and you have two main types of emul of emulsima my cat <laughs> And you have two main types of emulsification. One is water into oil, and the other is oil into water. Oil into water is more lightweight, kind of like a day cream type um, lotion or makeup. And water into oil is a bit heavier. So this one is the water into oil, and it makes sense. It's definitely kind of a... The formula feels lightweight, but it actually is a bit heavier on the skin, and I don't feel like it actually absorbs as quickly as an oil into water emulsification would. Then after those top five ingredients, going down the list, most of the other ingredients are functional ingredients, which means exactly what it sounds like. They serve a very specific purpose. You have quite a few emollients, which are kind of like skin softeners. You have solubilizers, which take oil and make sure that they basically integrate into the rest of the formula. And then you have surfactants. So these are all very functional ingredients that are used commonly in cosmetics and skincare. And Moreover, all of the ingredients on this list are just 100% like A++ ingredients. As a skincare formulator, I thoroughly enjoy seeing a list like this just because you know it's like, mm, it really is more like skincare than makeup. But that said, it does leave you with a bit more of like an oily finish. Okay, so now that we got those down, I'm just going to go through the pros and cons of this pretty quickly. Pros, like I was just saying, these ingredients are the best of the best. They really are hands down just beautiful ingredients. The formula is beautiful. And as a skincare formulator, someone who really invests in their skin, I think it's a really great thing that you can put on your skin. It does also come in 18 shades, which for a skin tint is really great. Now, this one comes in 20, so just a few more. And honestly, I thought that this shade range in this was a little bit better, and this did hold true to its color a bit more. But again, 18 shades in something like this, it's still really great compared to what it used to be like, four shades. Also, it has SPF 40, which it's like an a added boost of SPF. It has 12% zinc oxide, which is a pretty high amount. A lot of sunscreens, that's all they have. So putting this on over your sunscreen, you're gonna be covered 100% chef's kiss, mwah, 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 love it. And the last thing I wanted to mention that is definitely a pro in my book is this is a really great one for drier climates and drier weather. Um, for me right now, it's probably not the best time to wear it because it is very, very, very shiny. Um, but this would just, my skin would soak it up in the winter time. So definitely gonna keep a hold of it. Good thing I got it in a light shade, perfect for the winter. The cons. It is $46. That is a lot. For one fluid ounce, I mean, the ingredient list is stellar, so I understand it. But that said, if you don't have that kind of money and you still want really great ingredients, you're kind of left in the lurch and you don't have anywhere to turn. Um, just a suggestion though, if you are looking for really clean ingredients and this one's just out of your price range, I would suggest looking for tinted sunscreens instead. They can be a little bit heavier sometimes, but there are some cheaper brands out there and I will link one of my tinted sunscreen videos above. That way you can kind of see that there are some cheaper options if you still want really great ingredients, but not this price tag. And then like I said before, the, the shade range, it's not that I have a problem with the shade range, it's that I have a problem with the, the tone of it in the bottle and like on the dropper, like here. And then on my face, I did find that it just kind of darkened a bit and wasn't really true to the color it looked like. So that's probably the oxidation um, and that is common in some makeups, but it's something to keep in mind. Okay guys, so I'm not gonna choose which one is better. That's not really the purpose of this. Along the same lines as some of my other videos, I think they serve very different purposes and I think it's pretty clear what each one would be best for. For me, the Ilia is a great winter one. I The shade range that I got, that's just on me, but also just like the oils and the emollients and all of it, this would be perfect in the winter. It would My skin would soak it up. It's beautiful. I can't really wear this in the summer. Not only do I feel like it's gonna, every time I touch my face, it's coming off, but I look like an oil spill on my face. My face is an oil spill. Now, this one, is much cheaper half the price and like I said it dries down but also I'm actually getting a pretty nice glow through the skin tint I didn't powder it I think it's a really nice one for the summer and I think it's a really good option for somebody that's looking for like a mid-range price but 
the ingredient list is basically silicone and you're just putting silicone on your face. I don't have a problem with that, but it is something to keep in mind. So I think they really do serve two different purposes. Maybe the best one to compare the Ilia to would be this one, which is the Glossier Skin Perfecting Tint. So if you're interested in seeing that, let me know and I can absolutely do that. But I was just so curious about these two. Just, I mean, like the bottles alone, how could I not? And I think it was a fun, fun little ditty to do. So, all right, I am going to finish it up there and let me know if you do have any questions in the description below. But always like, subscribe, it really helps my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.